are such an asshole. We have an original request, and you guys know how I like original requests, because then I get to talk about what I want. I don't hit the gym, and I'm fat, and I can't find the girls. Um, did you? Uh, never mind. So, uh, <clears throat> anonymous writes. Hello, Mr. Celery. My only hope. Uh, wanted to say thanks for the online content and books. You've had such a positive impact on my life. Many videos speak directly to me. I'm a male mid-40s who was in finance and economics major at a Big Ten school as well. Those degrees were as valuable as the crap you dodged at San Francisco last week. <clears throat> I have no kids or wife as well. Girls here in SoCal don't want to date a six foot three million millionaire minimalist. No, they no, no. Well, that's a different story. Look up, they don't know the difference between debt or equity spending. They don't care. Is that am I still in focus? I am. Boy, that camera looks like it's about to tip over. Uh, it, it's not about whether you – women don't want a millionaire. They don't want a rich guy. They want someone who spends money. And that, that thankfully, in the United States means most men who don't have any money but will borrow it to impress the girls. Minimalist? Oh, oh, as dry as the Mojave Desert, my friend. Just a little bit off to your east. <clears throat> Looking to move out of this dumpster fire of a state next year. Uh, thanks for getting me into hiking. I found it has a much higher ROI versus sports ball and dating apps. Well, it's because both those have zero negative ROI. Even lost 30 pounds. Now, here's cool because I am in Vegas, and I these are the ones I want to hit. Uh, San Jacinto, outside Palm Spring, Springs. You climb Mount uh, San Jacinto. Uh, clouds rest in Yosemite. I haven't done that yet. You got to probably wait for summer for that. Would love to do Telescope Peak outside Death Valley or another death march with you someday. Yeah, I do want to hit Telescope Peak. It just it takes three hours to get to the to the trailhead. Uh, my goal is to hit every U.S. national park by 50 already halfway there. Don't, don't even bother with the eastern. Just stay this side of the Mississippi. There ain't anything over on that side of the country. Uh, Anyway, I'd love to contribute to two Cappy Originals, dealer's choice on the topics, name the price the world needs more of you. Nope. It's just, y'all y'all can just go look up the truth. All right. Well, so I want to talk about this. We're going to do an economics lesson as it pertains to disease and the economic ramifications of it. And it's a very overall, multiple important overall arcing economic lessons here. But the main one is you, you should never overthink economics. And, uh, when we stop overthinking economics, one, the solutions become very apparent. But <clears throat> so do the problems. And the problem is a very simple one. And it's not like I'm a super high IQ economist. I'm, I'm not in that regard. It's just, you, why are you such a good economist? Because I point out very obvious things that no one has the balls to say. <clears throat> so while we're going all crazy uh, over the disease, and the ramifications, and the great resignation, which is, has its own origins as well. Uh, the response, both at the government and societal level, and this goes beyond government, is like, oh, what do we got to do? Get the economy going again. I'm just like, leave it the F alone. How about you don't tax it to death? How, do you don't, how about you don't regulate it to death? And just leave it alone. But what if it collapses? Economies do that. People make stupid choices. They buy dot coms at a price to earnings ratio of 300. People, people do stupid things. They, they major in the liberal arts and go into social sciences, and, 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 but let them suffer. And then that way, the next year, whoa, hey, you see what happened? Oh, don't do that. Frank had an older sister who majored in literature. Well, didn't she kind of know how to read already? We thought so too, yes. After 13 years of K through 12, apparently she just didn't read good enough. <clears throat> She's a really good reader now. Yeah, 250,000, Middlebury. Yep, master's degree in reading. Whoa, she must be really good with the words. <laughs> so this is another simple economic observation I have. And it's one you guys are going to probably want to <clears throat> prepare for, but also one you can take advantage of. All right, so here's the deal. The disease comes. And we say, hey, instead of like protecting the frail and those susceptible to it, let's shut down the main economic arteries and engines of the economic growth, putting everybody at home. And I'm not even going to get into the politics of the, the, the root beer floats and the shots or anything like that. I'm just going to look at it from an economic standpoint. <clears throat> and so the solution was, under Trump, by the way, let's print off a lot of money. 
Now you say, well, does how does that result in more stuff being produced? It doesn't. <laughs> what it, it, it's like the whole world shut down. Everyone printed off more money. I'm like, well, if the whole world shut down, what is there to buy with it? And thank God the farms didn't shut down. Thank God for that. Uh, and thank God China didn't shut down because I don't know what you Americans would have done without Chinese people actually producing the real goods and services you all want. Well, you play make-believe teacher, social worker, government worker. <clears throat> I am affecting change. I can't eat change. Um, and where was I going with that? Oh, so, we, but he's like, oh, all right, let's just print off more money. And under Trump, if you want to look it up, not Biden. I'm just being intellectually honest. Biden's continued this, but Trump quadrupled the money supply in a year. We didn't do that during the Spanish flu. We didn't do that during World War II. I don't even think we did that during the Revolutionary War. Neither here nor there. <coughs> um, we print off a lot of money. And then um, what else? Oh, we're going to do the stimulus checks, and we're going to have government intervention, and we're going to have a rent moratorium. We're going to do all these things. And now that maybe sort of... It's looking like the Democrats are maybe going to say, all right, yeah, it's just a, it's just a cough now. We, I don't know what's going to happen there. That's politics. Don't deal with that. But now that it looks like maybe the end of the tunnel is in sight, maybe we're going to turn the corner. Uh, now we got to figure out what are we going to do? What's what's monetary policy going to be? What's the federal going to going to do with interest rates? And, <clears throat> and then, uh, Further complicating it, because I don't believe this is a consequence of the disease, but further complicating it, being kind of cool, I think the millennials and Gen Zers had enough. I think Gen Xers had enough. And the disease showed us we didn't have to be commuting, which I've been saying for 20-odd years, but don't listen to that guy. What does he know? He's just an economist. <clears throat> and um, especially in light of all the debt young people had to take on to get completely worthless degrees just to work a regular job they could have done at the age of 14. And many thanks to people like Joshua Fluke and the disease and changing people's behaviors and the stimulus checks and the remote, people say, wait, I don't need to work this much. I don't like working. I'm going to work for And now people are like, nope, nope. And even though I am all against UBI, I'm actually for the, the this side consequence, this unintended consequence, this uh, fringe benefit, where you have the great resignation, where you know I'm no big, I'm not a Democrat, obviously, but I've always been like, I don't know why you're working for a wage you can't live on. Just say no. I also don't have kids you can't afford, but I don't want to force responsibility on you. I mean, let's just blame the the Republicans in the Senate one more time, shall we? That's why you have five kids from four different fathers. That's it's the Republicans in the Senate that made you poor. I had now, right? <laughs> and where was it going? Um, <clears throat> oh, so people are resigning and they're not they're not taking it anymore. And that's good because corporate America uh, <laughs> in Minecraft, there would be things I do to dang near. 60% of the people who lead up corporate. It, it's not tenable. There's no reason. It, it is not acceptable to work in corporate America. So all of a sudden, there's a labor shortage. <clears throat> and now we can't, we can't get things imported because there's not enough truck drivers to take the stuff off of the docks. Uh, we have people not showing up. And, oh, my God, I can't get a restaurant food that's good. I'm actually perturbed about that because that's the one Nice luxury I afford myself, but no longer. I just made myself some steak and chicken for a, a fraction of what it would cost me to go and eat over at McDonald's. True. But there's this much bigger thing no one's talking about. Uh, and this is the economic uh, point that I wanted to make. And, and it's, it's, the, it's all that economics is about. It's what communists don't get and what all the social science and liberal arts majors don't get. And that is production. If you look at all the theater and fanfare and the billions and trillions and the Federal Reserve doing this and that stimulus check, that, da, 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 it all doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you don't have people working. And why is there certain, certainly supply chain issues? Well, we don't have the widgets, so Bob can't come to work because he needs the widgets to make other widgets. 
and da 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 da. What is a much more important long-term structural problem that you're you're I'm I'm done trying to address it. I've been addressing it for I don't know 2010, and that is the utter lack of producers and productive people we've created in this country. Now, here I use the word useless. Not worthless because there's still potential, and that doesn't mean if you're not working, um, you're not doing something else. Like you could be raising your children. No! Oh, oh that's horrible. <clears throat> Raise children? What is this, the 1950s? <clears throat> anyway. Uh, but I'm, from an economic perspective, uh, we have raised – now, two full generations, I argue two and a half with the with the, my generation, of pretty useless people. Don't tell me I know this one person who's 25 and is an engineer. We got them all the time. I know. I'm, I'm saying generally, what we're failing to realize, because it's being masked by all the theater of the disease and root beer floats and all this government action, I'm kind of saying, hey, um, does the engine even work? Do we even got fuel for this? I know you're all worried about what the dashboard lights look like and how you're going to arrange the cup holders and and who are we going to get uh, racing tires is going to have a cold air intake and this kind of car that we're building and what color is the car going to be? You know, you're like libertarian setting up a government. And I'm kind of like, uh, the car's engine don't work. <clears throat> it's, it's in pretty bad shape. You got a, an eight cylinder here and only two are working. And you got no fuel. And mine is without producers, without people producing stuff, this is all very cute and academic and soon enough the disease will go away. My question is, what are you doing to address the complete mismatch between what Americans want to consume, what they want to buy, and what Americans are capable of producing? Now, this has been addressed in the past <clears throat> through international trade. Okay, uh, I'm not going to bore you with the consequences of world reserve currency but basically all we outsource all the real work to poorer second and third world countries mainly china india asia all of asia let's just say and, and other countries too whereas in the united states we do make things there's certainly re legitimate real gdp an increasing percentage of this gdp is not real gdp at all a and once again where i go uh, my criticism of the liberal arts of the social sciences None of those degrees and disciplines, including economics, by the way, I'm honest, including business school as well, I'm honest, <clears throat> produce anybody capable of producing anything of value. All you do is produce, and I'm not being pejorative, I'm being descriptive here, parasites. Because they got to be fed, they got to be kept alive. But what the hell do you do with an English teacher? Oh, maybe you teach kids, you know, kindergarten through fourth grade how to read and write. But by that time, the the, the computers and the smartphones will take care of that. <clears throat> Don't tell me early childhood education or social work, the, the whole genre of social work, does anything. You don't do anything. You fail at the ostensible nonprofit job that you're supposed to do. You don't do that. Um, the number of artists that generally for music... <clears throat> music therapy, blah, blah, blah. And, and sadly and tragically, all of y'all end up having to do what? Go produce something in the real world because that's where the money is. Because there's only so many government grants to go around to have you write feminist poetry. And then even if you do get it, like let's say you get all the government grants. I mean, you, here, tell me, do you know someone like this? They're a whatever, worthless degreed person pursuing their career and profession in something. And they work for some kind of amorphous nonprofit or website or whatever that is, uh, it, it relies on government grants or charity even from the, from the private sector. All right. People not, they're not willingly buying the product. So the government either got to force people to pay for this or people feeling sad for them. You know, theater would be a perfect example of this. Okay. Well, we spend literally, God, I bet you we're around a trillion bucks already. Certainly hundreds of billions, if not a full trillion, I would argue, on these grants and nonprofit touchy-feely things. You throw in the welfare state, we're certainly spending multiple trillions of dollars. What do they end up doing then in addition to that? And you're like, yeah, they work a regular daytime job. And how many people are defined by that? 
They have a real, what are you? What are you? Based on the number of hours, what are you really? I'm a bartender. Fine. I'm a nanny. Perfectly fine. I'm a, I'm a, a waiter or wait staff or barista. Nothing wrong with that. But then they, oh, I'm an author. No, no, no. I'm an author. Okay. <laughs> I don't even want to be. I make a living. I earn money making. That's my living. Your living is what you do. All right. You could say, and on the side I write, but if you ain't living it, you are not it. I'm an actor. No, you are an aspiring actor. You are an aspiring rapper who's going to live another you know, two or three weeks before you get shot. <clears throat> but you are a line worker. You're a chef. You're the clerk at the gas station. Nothing wrong with it. You know what's, why there's nothing wrong with it? Because you're actually producing real GDP. However, now when we have the disease and the gimme checks, <clears throat> and people have changed their uh, living uh, uh, choices, a lot of people are living at home, a lot of people can get by, a lot of people, and they're kind of going go and good in the response to unfair employment practices by modern day employers. <clears throat> but in the long term, we have to start asking ourselves, <laughs> okay, that's fine. We taught Amy absolutely nothing, and she got her master's degree in public health administration. But what percentage of the population can we keep producing and educating with absolutely useless skills? You can't even call them skills. Poppycock. One might argue even more damaging because as, you know, the, the meme of the smug liberal arts major, even if that person had a degree or, or wanted to work, would you want to hire them? They think it's beneath them. And this is the real problem we have. Humans don't take two days to raise. They don't take one week to train. <clears throat> unless they're educated or someone intelligent and a, a company wants to train them that. They take a decade and a half to at least get online, to get them onboarded. And we have now done two full generations of onboarding people with a bunch of worthless skills. It's like Demolition Man, where Wesley Snipes learns Kung Fu, assassin, snipering, all that other stuff, and then they teach um, Sly Stallone how to knit. <laughs> That's our education system. But what's worse with Sly, he at least knew he had, to, he had to fight the bad guy. He was still demolition man. These people now have a mental disease where they think they're brilliant and intelligent. So not only do they have no valuable skills, except for general labor, which is perfectly fine, they got attitude and lip. And whereas I'm completely sympathetic with them refusing to work for anything below a living wage, perfectly fine, not accepting uh, snippy little uh, Karen bosses got it. I don't know why y'all keep going like if anyone ever dared say diversity training. I'm like, nope. <laughs> no. Matter of fact, I say, okay, you're going to train me in on the job. Oh, you're going to have that training, but not how to train me to do the job. You are a boomer, aren't you? I'd immediately walk away. So, that, so that's all good. <clears throat> but uh, since it takes at least a decade and a half to train a generation, an army of a single year of people, we can't just flip this switch and all of a sudden have people meet these labor shortages. And whereas it's one thing, oh, we don't have enough wait staff. Okay, so I don't get my A&W cheeseburger. Um, what about things like truck drivers? Is that important? Or truck? Hey, does anyone in Canada think truck drivers are important? Does anyone think they play a role? Is it tradesmen? I can't find anyone to do the electricity. Yeah, yeah. You didn't raise enough electricians. You told literally every young person for the past two generations that people who go into the trades and the vocations are stupid and they all needed to go to college. So as I've said before, <clears throat> you can't find a plumber. Feces is backing up and overflowing into your bathroom. But I bet you your daughter can lecture you about how much privilege you have because you're a white man. I bet you you can get a sermon and a lecture about whatever uh, trans philosophy and privilege uh just someone down the street i bet you there's someone who plays the acoustic guitar with his masters in music really well at the local coffee shop who sings song about oppression and the 99 percent or the one percent or whatever whatever the numbers are now <clears throat> and so as you all have these first world tastes but you got not even third world productive skills. At least guys in the third, hey, you know what they make in the third world? What we want. This shirt probably was made in the third world. 
There's more genuine production going over there than what you guys do. And even this, even this all a bit, this isn't production. This is entertainment. You don't need this. I mean, there's an argument that this someday might shift economic thinking. People are like, whoa, we ought to produce some of value. And we never have a financial crisis again, or at least an education bubble again. But all the, you know, all the girls, are, I want to be only fans. And all you, I don't know, you guys playing video games? You're not even, at least the girls are producing something of value. But give the ladies that. Hat tip to you. You're, you're getting paid willingly so. The boys are just sitting home playing video games. The day is going to come. Though, mark my words, <clears throat> the day is going to come that the rest of the world that produces our stuff that we want are not going to produce it anymore. And there's not going to be enough tradesmen to go around to keep up even the basic infrastructure. And while you're all loftily going around trying to solve things that will never be solved, like poverty and discrimination and injustice, and because let's be honest, you don't really care about the plight of black people or Hispanics or anyone else that's on the lower economic spectrum. You're doing it all for yourself because you want to avoid math. It's one of the most disgusting, despicable things. This is why you just you, – I don't even believe for a second when you're like, I'm going into social work. No, no. You're a lying sack of filth. You're a lazy piece of crap from the suburbs. And you don't actually want to help out black people or Hispanics or poor people in general. You're just doing it so you don't have to have a real job. All right? <clears throat> when that's all that's left and foreign people aren't going to produce the stuff we need and there's not enough tradesmen to go around to keep electricity going or, or, or the roads or deliver stuff, you guys are going to realize just how screwed we are in the short and medium term to survive as, a, as an economy, not even a nation, just an economy. And that's what I would be addressing now. While we have this time that we have the world's reserve currency and other countries are being more dumb than us, producing or printing off more money, as long as China keeps thinking, thinking mercantilism and a fascist economic model is the way to go, and all the other countries want to export stuff to the U.S. on a fixed exchange rate, which by, I have no they, differences in economic, I think, Chinese don't know what they're doing. <clears throat> I know they think they know what they're doing because they're based doing this stuff based on like 1870s economics. But I'm I like the fact I got uh, you know some electronics for 20 bucks. <laughs> what well, we we really ought to have the next generation, which is going to be Generation Alpha. We really should train them to be productive members of society and produce things we want. Not only because we want to increase, you know, improve the trade balance, but did you notice how miserable all you boomers and I'll admit Gen X professors and, and leaders made two generations of young people today and not so young if you consider the millennials are approaching 40? Did you, did you see how impoverished you made them? Charging them $150,000 for worthless degrees, wasting four years of the use, sometimes six, sometimes eight. <clears throat> did, did you, and, and here's a, here's where I absolutely loathe and detest HR and Karen and progressive credentialism and, and corporate employers and government employers. You made it so impossible. I wouldn't say hard, impossible to become a productive member of society where you steal all the kids use from kindergarten to 22 to 24 to 26, depending on the college degree. And even then, after all that education, they not only have no skills, <clears throat> you won't hire them or train them or give them a job anywhere near their abilities or capabilities. Here's why I do feel sad for liberal arts people and, and, and the social science majors where it's like, okay, well, at least you did go to college. Like you're not dumb. You may be average intelligence, what if you had, had repurposed and redirected your studies towards a trade or accounting or becoming a dentist or a hygienist or something like that <clears throat> or just doing your own carpentry? What if instead of just, I don't know what you guys did with your kids. You just lied to them. You misled them. You sure as hell didn't prepare them for the adult world. You sure as hell didn't equip them with the tools and skills they needed to, to <clears throat> survive and find jobs and, and be successful. And you sure as heck didn't provide an economy or a labor uh, uh, market that would identify quickly who was what you needed at that time and get them on there and get them on the line now and have them produce things and stuff. This Orwellian, uh, was it, Jen Zaret from Dune Nightmare, 
where you have to go through an interview with HR and they're asking you literal witchcraft questions. By the way, burning at the stake might be a good idea in Minecraft, in Minecraft. But what's your favorite color and why? And <clears throat> it it's like the boomers. It's too late. You guys didn't save up enough money for retirement. Enjoy work until you're dead. It's like my generation. You're going to make the same mistake our parents made. You're not raising your kids. Your kids are going to live at home. Millennial parents doing the same thing. And it's, and it's all gone. It's all the Gen Z. No, they're, they're, they're pretty much gone. I think most of the Gen Zers will, who tune in here will agree with that. But <clears throat> how about we focus on Generation Alpha? Okay. The, the millennials, unless they had like a, a and get my book, How Not to Become a Millennial. There's, there's a path I paint for the millennial generation and more common, more uh, modernly applicable to today. Gen Zers where it's like, okay, look, your parents and society just lied to you. They just took away, they just lied to you and wasted your youth. And it was leftist, by the way. Don't blame the Republicans in the Senate. It was leftist teachers, leftist professors who not only lied to you, but took your money. <clears throat> Maybe you had that piece of paper. Right, you could turn it around, man. And now, because everyone's lying flat, you can actually go get a, a pretty good starting salary and, and re, restart your CDL uh, truck drivers, right? <clears throat> Military, if you're young enough. I mean, there's opportunity now that if you want to go and leave whatever crap hole you're in, you can do it. So there is a, a bright side to it. So the younger you are, the, the earlier you can to turn this around. I even argue the millennials could do it, but I I'm afraid. No offense to you guys, but you are never, I know you had nothing else in life as you slowly realize you've been lied to and there was nothing else in life, but man, it's not, it's not a needle. You got an IV of heroin called socialism and feminism and generally political ideology that has become your religion and your only thing of value. <clears throat> You're the guys that came up with pronouns as some kind of value system or traits. It, it's sad. Uh, but you could continue to waste your life. But you could you could take that out of your veins, say, what do I want to be? And then you go become something that's productive. And, and you'd be amazed how much more valuable you think and feel about yourself if instead of like panhandling for government money in a student loan bail, if you actually worked and supported yourself and produced something of value to the economy that people willingly wanted. Well, I've been a protest in the street and shut down an interstate. <laughs> but... If we don't want to ruin a third generation of young American lives, how about we start raising some producers for, for their own sake so they have purpose and reason? They're not wandering, lost, consuming nihilistic black pills. <clears throat> they're leaving the ghetto. They're leaving the barrio. They're leaving the trailer park. Hell, they come back. They buy the whole thing, raise it down, build some nice communities. People are proud of their of themselves and what they do. You start having pride in your community. People aren't wearing sweatpants and pajamas to Walmart. <clears throat> and by the way, didn't know if you knew this. If there's more electrician, like the next time you complain, there's not a plumber or a roofer or car mechanic, but you got a daughter or son who has a liberal arts degree, punch yourself in the face, and then grab your wife and have her kick you in the nuts. And then punch yourself in the face again. And then you kick her in the groin too. Won't hurt as much, but you know. And then and then say, hey, spouse, why are we beating the crap out of each other? And then you'll be like, oh, I remember. Because there's that guy on the internet who pointed out how hypocritical it was of me to say, I can't believe it's going to take two weeks to schedule an oil change. Meanwhile, I co-signed the loan on, on my precious little sweetheart, a suburbanite princess of a daughter's uh, journalism degree. That you should really just punch yourself in the face and kick your spouse in the in the nads, whether they have a nad, groin, kick them in the groin, because you're stupid. And I'm not asking anyone who's had kids already, and I mean this is really not a message for anyone thirty and over, because you're all wedded to your Marxist heroin ideology. You you have you've wasted your youth. You're very bitter. I understand. There's no hope. Well, there is. There's always time. <clears throat> but, you know, it requires work and effort. None of you guys like Rich Cooper's me message of do the work. But if you're under 30, all right, and you're thinking about having kids, or you're just kind of like, you know, a lot of this stuff don't make sense. My older brother had to move back home. Uh, my older sister uh, claims to be strong, independent, has a degree in whatever, 
sociology, <clears throat> but now she's showing her hoo ha on the internet. If this, if you know what, <laughs> I can't, I can't fault women for that. That's that's good money. I mean, yeah, it's safe work environment, and I'm not even, I wouldn't even all oh, test, test, test. I'm like, yeah, if I could do that, I would too. But generally speaking, for everyone, instead of listening to your teachers and your professors, because here's the thing, ain't no one coming to save you. If you were wondering, your parents are coming to save you, your teachers are coming to save you, your professors aren't coming to save you, your politicians aren't coming to save you, no one's coming to save you because, frankly, they're all too lazy and they're too vested to profit off of you. Your teachers are not going to tell you what you need to know to survive once you leave school. They themselves never let, left school. How would they know what it takes to survive in the real world? The, how would they know to be successful? They don't. They kind of like, oh, I need more money to babysit kids for nine months out of the year. Oh, <laughs> I got three months off. <clears throat> if you don't, here's the thing. If you don't want to end up like the millennials, first go read How Not to Become a Millennial. That's paperback Kindle Audio. Then, going to have to teach and say, what do I do to get a job? Well... There's lots of books out there. I would start with Worthless, The Young Person's Indispensable Guide to Choosing Right Major. You get Bachelor Pad Economics, but you don't even have to get that. I think it's kind of well known out in the spheres and the interwebs that you don't major in the liberal arts, that you don't have to go to college. That at the age of 18, if you get your CDL license, shoot, the day you turn 18, I don't know, maybe it's 21, depends on the state. You're like, I get my CDL license, I'm young, I could drive, I pass my test, and I can make what, 50, 60, 70,000? You follow Alex Patino's advice, you can make 100,000. You're young. We're seeing that more and more. You know, like we got the tornado chasing kid, and even though he's a ginger, he's doing really good in life. <laughs> he has no debt. He, has, he, he drives Uber, he chases tornadoes for a living. That, he's living the dream at 21. Or, or, I don't know, do you want to be the 38-year-old pissed-off millennial, still has student loans, didn't know how uh, uh, exponential math and interest rates worked on loans? And there they are, they got gray hair, and they're begging for a bailout? Who do you think's going to pay for that? My generation? I'm, our generation's going to be dead. You're going to pay for that. We already got to pay for the boomer Social Security. You get to pay for the millennial student loan bailout. So if you'd like to avoid it, and honest to God, this video should just go viral. It's the number one thing that would save all future. I don't care about current Americans, 30 plus. I don't care about you guys. You're all a bunch of liars. You're lazy. You believe in these false gods of politics and, and, and poppy. Just, just go. It's, it's over. But the time of man is over. The day of the elves have come or whatever the thing was on the, on the dragon show with the swords. Um, it's the younger people because you got your life ahead of you. And so I don't, for those, here's the irony. For the people 30 and over, Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. Can you pull the levers of power to make it so that young people can succeed and that you give them employable, highly compensated skills? You got them for 20 years, K through college. Could we? Scale back on the, oh, the victimhoods. Oh, what's this trait and that trait? You have this color hair. What's down there? Okay. That's that's fine. Maybe a day or two of that. But could we teach them how to, I don't know, do their taxes, work on their cars, carpentry, do accounting, computer programming? No, we got to teach a Porter's Five Forces model and how there's institutional isms and ists. I don't, tell me again how being Jesse Jackson ever gave a positive message to one single black person to go and do something productive in their life. Aside from just misery and sadness. What? <laughs> and so, I, and here's the problem for you, you under 30-somethings. God, it really is don't trust anyone over 30. It really is that now. It has become that. They're not going to give it up. They make too much in interest on your student loans and your car loans and your credit card debts uh, to that. They, there's too many people who get elected to power because they've given you an ideology of boo-hoo-hoo, woe-is-me-ism because I was born a certain way with a certain trait. All right? 
And if you if you follow that and you follow the, your advice, you now have two full generations to know where that ends up. I'd argue four if you look at the if the baby boomers who don't have no money and ain't nobody going to visit them in a nursing home because they got divorced. They didn't need to. Ch- you don't need a nuclear family. Ha 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 ha. You don't need fathers. <clears throat> you just look at all the Americans that are older. You're like, do you want to become? Do you want to be as happy as Nancy Pelosi? Well, I'd like to be as rich. I, I didn't ask you if you want to be rich. Do you want to be as happy as Nancy Pelosi? No, you don't, because she ain't happy at all. And all I can do as an economist is tell you kids, younger, under 30, you need to get, you, you can't be effing around with saving the world when you, you aren't even making rent, okay? You got to squirrel away your finances. You got to get that lined up. And the quickest way to do that is to get yourself a productive skill that people willingly pay. Right. So you're not some liberal arts graduate pulling teeth, hoping to get a government grant that's going to last at most a year and will maybe pay for groceries. And you still got to sling burgers. So there's and if you got questions, you can always hire me. You know, assholeconsulting.com. You could read my book. That's probably going to be cheaper. All right. But it, it I think you kind of got it. Like, is there something that I produce that people want at the end? Like people don't like poop coming out of their toilet, all right? And they don't go running to a sociology professor for the solution, and they're not going to pay $1,000 an hour because there's poop coming out of the toilets. They're going to go to a plumber. And plumbers, by the way, make way more than your average professor, way more. Um, There's kind of a a quasi-economy, Uber, Lyft. CDL, driving for Amazon, that's where the money is. You don't even have to have a, a college education for that. You don't need a college education for most things. But if you're going to do it, you know, engineering, I like to play video games. You do? Who makes it? Software developers. Become a computer programmer. <clears throat> but for God's sake, the single worst damaging phrase to the American economy, I'd say in the past probably 40 years, probably 50 years, because I was I was a kid back then, has been follow your heart and money will follow. No, it won't. You sh- here's, here's my advice, and you can, this is in how not to become a millennial. I tell you how the economics of the world works. The world doesn't give a crap what you want to do. It doesn't give one flying S. You shut the F up, you listen, and you do what the world tells you to do. And even I had that problem. I thought I wanted to become an economist. I'm going to come get <clears throat> into banking. You know, efficiently allocate capital as boring as that might sound. I shut up. Almost had to have my face run, ran into it. And I thought, well, I'll teach dance classes on the side. This is going back to 1998, 1999. You know what I made an hour the first time I taught dance classes? $350 an hour in 1999 dollars, which is almost like maybe $700 today. Now, of course, it didn't keep going. That was a statistical freak, but it woke me up. It slapped me across my face. Say, hey, Cappy, the world doesn't want someone to balance their budget or talk about frugality. I have a class link down below if you want to get out of poverty that does that already. It's called Achieving Financial Excellence. It's linked down there below. <clears throat> but here's going to be a shock. Uh, that class will have a lot less people signing up for it than people who want to learn how to salsa dance or ballroom or tango, or swing dance. And that's how I kind of ended up here, actually, is I'm like, oh, people want me to teach them how to dance. And I did. Oh, people want me to write books on economics. They don't want me to, like, I don't know, do credit analysis, warn them out. They want me to write books. Oh, people want me to be on the internet doing goofy things like I am am now. If I had shut up and asked that, you know, 20 years before it finally stuck into my head, I'd be 20 years ahead. And the quickest way to find out what the world wants you to do is see what they're paying per hour. And you can find that on the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Find any job, dental hygienist, BLS. Type it into Google. It'll take you right to the Bureau of Labor Statistics page, and there will be a median wage. That will tell you the higher the wage, the more the world wants you to do that. That's it. Almost kind of makes me want to look up cam girl. Hang on, let's do that. See if there's cam girl. <laughs> cam girl. Be like, oh, it'd have to be cam person. 
Uh, no, it's not there. It's not there. They would. <laughs> oh, the economists at the Bureau of Labor Statistics are so boring. So there you go. <clears throat> What you really ought to be worried about is that we have now two full generations of adults, prime working age, who have no skills. They're useless. Do we want to have productive, useful people in the future? And by the way, that's the only group of people who are going to produce the stuff that we need, keep our infrastructure and housing up. And if there's any shot to make it so that your social security checks in your precious little welfare state that you're all relying upon when you get older, that those checks actually go to purchase something of value and it's not just Zimbabwe dollars or Weimar Republic dollars inflated away, you're going to need production on the other side. So that's why I don't care about, ooh, the Fed chairman, ooh, they're doing this, ooh, Jim Cramer, that, ooh. What? Is the upcoming generation learning to do? Are they learning to work or be whiny little bitches like the past two generations? And if we're going to be whiny little bitches, I guess we're going to have to throw ourselves at the mercy of the rest of the world to produce what we want. And you can all expect your toilets to get plugged up. But if you start producing real men and women with real skills and talents, the younger generation could avoid the hell and misery and penury that Gen Xers, millennials, and the Gen Zers have gone through. And you might even get a visit from your kids in the nursing home when you're that age. All right, let's go through the super chats, the super chats, the super chats. Let's go through the super chats and have ourselves a treat. Um, while I scroll up to get back, holy cow, a lot of super chats. Um, geez, I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> uh, so there is a, if you're younger, poverty. Don't know, you don't have a clear financial direction. I have a class link below. Achieving financial excellence is offered through my teachable course thing. Um, it's 99 bucks. Uh, take a look at it. it. Basically, I took all my economic knowledge and I created the most direct path out of poverty and into financial stability for 2022. And so uh, it's philosophical. I don't think it's boring, but if you guys want to take that, it's, it's available to you. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's go through here. Uh, the Black Blur for $10. Useless. Why I have you, sir. I graduated with my bachelor's at 20 in communications with an emphasis on speech language pathology. Now I can work my dream job as a dog walker 20 hours a week. Dog walkers make a lot of money. Dog walkers make a lot of money. I know kids that were reliant. This goes back a bit. The kids were reliable and they're making $20 an hour babysitting, which was more than pretty much every liberal arts graduate I knew, uh, you know, working for what, $8 an hour with tips. <clears throat> so scrolling down, scrolling down. Boy, there's a lot of you guys. Oh, 419 people tuning in. How you guys doing? Uh, everyone, I guess, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, I'd appreciate it. I'm trying to get up to uh, 100,000. Uh, Taylor Welsh, two bucks. Excited for the best of Cappy compilation. It's going to be a while. I got to finish taxes. I got to go to Miami. Oh, I'll be on Fresh and Fit. Uh, 9th or 10th? Somewhere there. Uh, so I'll let you guys know when that's coming up. <clears throat> going to be hanging out with Donovan Sharp and Rolo. We're texting back to figure out time. Like, what time? Da, 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 da. I say, Hey, has anyone reached out to old man Rolo? You're like, yeah, he's on the list. But, you know, he's old man Rolo. He, he's like, ah, what's going on? I'm busy doing the rounds. Taboo smash, 10 bucks. But, Cappy, I need a social worker to change the world. People say to me that I was smart and college should be a right to all people in the U.S. You are hurting my Fifi. Hashtag cancel the truth. Well, <clears throat> let me point that out to any young person. See, I'm only going for the younger people. Old people, I don't care. You guys, you guys are pretty much jerks too. Who hurt you? Uh, pretty much my entire generation. Like most of you guys are all dicks, frankly speaking. <clears throat> um, the <laughs> for you young people, look at everyone who's like, I'm going to change the world. Look at them. Do you want to become them? They're miserable. They po. They po. They got debt and they're pissed off. Look, no one wants some smarmy, like the, the person on the thumbnail. No one wants some smug, smarmy, sanctimonious, lecturing, proselytizing, leftist Marxist. You know, you really ought to recycle. 
No one, no one pays money for that. People do pay money for a good cookie. You guys ever go to Crumble Cookies? I discovered that. They got those out here in Vegas, that they're all over the nation. $5 for a cookie. Obviously a very, very, very rare treat, but I had one. I'm like, oh my God, I can almost see why people spend $5 on this cookie. It was a really good cookie. <clears throat> but you'll make more money selling cookies and babysitting than you will lecturing people about how great you are because you vote for other people's money. The Black Blur, five bucks. Oh yeah, speaking on millennials, Cappy, what's your opinion on the whole Reddit anti-work guy who went on CNN? I don't watch news. I don't watch the news. Um, I, I, I guess I'm for him if he was anti-work. Uh, he may be a Marxist as well, but I think this is about high time. You know, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm a capitalist. That doesn't mean I'm, I am pro-business. That doesn't mean I'm pro-businesses doing delusional psychopathic crap um, to their employees. You know, especially requiring a master's degree to come work for you at an entry-level job. Get the F out of here. I'll be targeting the CPA society here pretty soon. There's a perfect example. <clears throat> oh, my God, there's not enough accounts. We need more accounts. Well, why do you keep increasing the requirements to become a CPA? Did you know back in the boomer time that to become a CPA, you just had to pass the test? Same thing with law school. There's one thing California's got. You don't have to go to law school to get, become a lawyer in California. You just have to pass the bar. That's how every bit of education should be now. Self-study online, pass a test, here's your certification. <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I hope I hope he's doing it. Uh, radio, radio Gan, 20 generous euros. Watched the Michael Kingwood interview earlier. As an aspiring non-communist writer, it was extremely formative and inspiring. You the man. Yeah, take a look if you guys want my buddy Michael Kingswood. He just took off about an hour ago. Um. He wrote, well, I got all these books here. Um, the Glimmer Veil. Look up Glimmer. Glimmer spelled the way it sounds. Uh, but you can go to non-communist science fiction and look at all of his stuff. And that's what he specializes in, non-communist science fiction. Man has 51 publications, and he's done nothing in marketing. I'm like, okay, you got the writing down. Now let's try marketing. The Black Blur, not CNN, I meant Fox News. That's all right. It, no, I didn't see it there either. I, <clears throat> I don't do that. <laughs> Boom. Uh, Alex Patino, oh my God, look out. A guy who didn't get a college degree and makes more than people with college degrees. Alex Patino, a truck driving Latino agent in the field. Five bucks. Funny thing is that Rome at least resisted the oncoming hordes. Today, let's go. Brandon is allowing others to come in and destroy the USA from the inside. It's it's not. I'll I'll, I'll one up you on that, Alex. That that's probably a better quality and caliber of people coming in because they're working. What what is what's over? And it's it. We have to deal with this. It's it's domestic. We either stop spoiling and lying our, to our children, like oh you're just amazing. Like there should never be a participation trophy ever issued again. And we knock it off with this fall heart money follow. All right. And oh, my God, thing that like we have got to get over the those group of people over there have it better than that group of people. It's like, well, do that group of people as a group make dumber decisions? Yes. How about we focus on the dumb decisions then so everyone gets out of their their, their poverty until we get there? We're just especially the public schools. We're just raising mindless little socialist robots who are not going to do the hard work to learn the skills and they're going to have miserable lives and they're going to end up like the millennials and Gen Zers. And they'll end, and by the way, ladies, well, did you want to have kids or not? That'd be it. Well, separate story. Never mind. I was going to talk about Gen X women and their, their recent discovery of this thing called menopause that apparently has been lurking and no one knew about. Hey, did you know? Yes. Since, since the sixth grade when they taught us that. But, you know, maybe you weren't paying attention to the, to the women part. <clears throat> um, it did. Here's what I eh. – just have a plan B, Alex. That's why I say have a plan B outside the United States. Uh, DB, five Canadian bucks. Problem most millennials have is avoiding discomfort. Well, it's okay to avoid discomfort. But you got to ask, like, okay, in avoiding this discomfort, will I cause myself more pain than had I just suffered the discomfort up front and I didn't have the pain no more? It's, it's the classic harsh medicine. It tastes bad. Yes, it does. Before that – 
five minutes max, your your mouth tastes icky, and you're like, blah, blah, blah. then you don't get the gout or whatever. It's the same thing. For the four years, you have to study real hard in a, a, a real discipline or trade. You avoid yourself the next 60 years of poverty, waiting for a bus in the cold. <clears throat> but I don't like math. Enjoy the cold bus. And by the way, if you're wondering if buses are going to get nicer, the buses will get nicer. It's just whether people are defecating and urinating in them. Go, San Francisco, land of the poop. Um, our modern-day creature comforts have enslaved us to our vices and weakened us. Yeah, but it doesn't make the – it just creates different and longer-lasting pain. Depression, suicide. Girls are what the, the antidepressant use among women as they get older goes up. I it it's a choice. It's a choice. You know, what do you want to pursue in life? Another reason to take that class link below. If you're a little lost, you don't know what life is about, you don't have a goal. What do I do? Take the class below. <clears throat> Goth Rocker. 50, Jenner, thank you, Goth. Uh, 50 bucks, Eco Loss, Ace Hardware, go there. Go to get three keys made. Oh, the economic efficiency loss of the day, yep. Did you go to the, hang on, before I read any more, Goth, did you go to the key making machine that works one out of three times? Because I've gone to the key making machine that works one out of three times. They have them at the Lowe's and the Homie Depots, and they don't make keys reliably. But let's see if you went to the key machine. Uh, go to get three keys made, have a million dollar computer key machine. First key you have here. <laughs> First key can't do it. Computer doesn't see it. Second key, that one is out of stock. Third key makes it for me. Here, try this. Of course it doesn't work. Nope. You don't know. You got to go and say, okay, goth rocker, let me earn you a $50. Let me help you with your $50. You go and you you call, or the next time you happen to go to the homey depot or a hardware store to get something else that you need, ask them. I see you have a key machine there. Do you have the human machine that makes the keys, like the regular ones that work? If they say yes, there's your your go to place to get the keys. But yes, you never trust those key machines. Those key machines are absolutely a joke. They they don't work. They do not work. And then, like, it doesn't work. Of course, oh, get your receipt back. It's a two dollar key, but you know, you you go there. It's like, no, nope, do this right. If I was a consultant, I tell every hardware home improvement store, don't don't do that, don't don't do that. You know, the ten million dollar key making machine. Who made off like a bandit? Who came up with it? Like, hey, I got an idea. Well, what is it, Frank? I'm going to come up with a key making machine. That actually sounds quite practical. But here's the trick. Yeah, it'll only work one out of every three times. Ooh, that'll piss the people off. Yeah, that's what we do here at Evil Corp. Oh. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep those doggies scrolling. Boop, 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 doo, 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 doo. <clears throat> eat them up, eat them, eat them up, move them up, move them out, head them up, head them up, move them in. Ba -da -ba -da -da -da. Raw high, raw high. Uh, shouting from the cheap sheet, the seats. <clears throat> Five bucks, no time to teach marketable skills. Too busy teaching the youth about 200 genders and playing privilege bingo. Yeah, yeah, just so you kids know, like here's here where you can think about it. Does learning about all the various type of genders, which fine, they exist, fine, let's just say. Does that really get you employed? No. I'd even say history class. Like, do I have to learn about the Civil War for the fifth time? I got it. North, South, slavery, Appomattox Courthouse. Boom. Done. Got it. King, uh, not King. Uh, President Grant at the end. The end. Lincoln assassinated. Got it. Well, but we need to employ those history teachers. How would you not know the Civil War was from 1861 to 1865? Oh, you didn't, even though you did go through school and had it taught to you eight times? I love uh, Dick Masterson's where they do the, the war date. Here's what you do. Uh, this is not my idea, but they always ask their girls that they're dating, like, you know, basic, when were these wars? Civil War. And you don't have to, like, oh, you know, what was it? 1776 to 1873. Even I'm not too sure about that one. 
or 18, I'm sorry, 18, 1783. I think maybe that's when the British finally left. But Civil War, 61, 65, 1812, they usually get that one. World War I, 1418, World War II, 39. Well, that's Europe, but United States, 41, 45. Vietnam, 65, 75, depending on how you want to. How do you want to claim that? Um, but uh, World War II, wasn't it like 1890? Okay, World War One was after that. Oh, you have a degree, right? Yeah. Skilled, labor, strong, independent. You can rely on Tina to pay her share of federal taxes. What will we do without her? And then yet Tina, ew, grody. He's a mechanic. Ah, oh, I don't like mechanics. I, you know, I like a guy who knows that the Civil War was from 2001 to 2005. That's my kind of guy. Uh, it's sad. Look it up. There should be video clips. You're just like shaking your head. And they think it's so funny. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, I do have a college degree. <laughs> Be strong, two bucks. You should eat at Cracker Barrel. The food is good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think the closest one is in Minnesota. I don't think they got them out here. I haven't seen one in Vegas. <laughs> Competent man. <laughs> of the red pill community who gets around. <clears throat> Michaela Peterson is supposed to be going on Fresh and Fit soon. Any chance you run into her? A live conversation would be no. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, I am not disagreeing with Roll. I have different tastes and preferences than Roll, and I'm not saying Roll had this has nothing to do with whether I would bang Michaela Pierce. That's not what I'm saying. I absolutely do not talk to childish, mindless, spoiled daddy's children. I, I do not view her as an equal at all. I do not view her as a human who has endured or suffered. I know she has had some uh, medical problems in the past. I, I, no, no. I Again, <clears throat> this electrical outlet is more not. She is a known entity. She is an NPC. Dad paid for things. She had an easy life. Single mom, divorced. I don't, I don't, there is not a brain there. I do not need to talk to that, that entity. That there would be nothing. What would we talk about? What what really got me, and I never really paid much attention, but I was listening to some kind of podcast that she was on, and she was like, yeah, so we're trying to figure out, you know, a place to move. Let me know if anyone has any recommendations. You know, preferably go with, like, you know, a, a, a vineyard nearby. I'm like, and there, she was talking globally, living globally. I'm like, how much of daddy's money have you got? And I'm sorry, I'm just not impressed with people who, who had life on easy mode. <clears throat> They're not humans, in my opinion. How do we drop down to one people tuning in? Did I just lose my audience? We're still live, it says. All right. <clears throat> um, no, so I, I, uh, it would not be interesting. I would have no questions of her. I wouldn't. I don't. I, I I'm not saying this to to crit critique or criticize her. I don't care what she says. I probably already know the answer to it. Like, I bet you that squirrel's going to run up the tree. Oh, my God. The squirrel ran up the tree. I do not. I, oh, I'd like to say that, but I can't. I have no respect and no interest at all in NPCs there. I have no interest in robots. Not at all. But, so a conversation would be like, not me there. And just be whatever she wanted to talk about. Jug bro for two bucks. So <clears throat> that's why burger patties are served frozen to us. So that's why burger patties are. Oh, that's why burger are served frozen to us. Um. Yeah. Well, there's a whole other thing about. Uh, I didn't even talk about this. We're talking about skills. Let's also talk about attitude. Whereas I'm completely sympathetic with people not um not wanting to to tolerate unfair, unacceptable working conditions and not acceptable pay. Um, oh yeah, you have a bunch of kids who are entitled and they think real work is beneath them. They have master's degrees, they have social work degrees they, and they're not going, they, they really do believe. And I know someone like this, 
Chuck, not a leftist, a male, a conservative. That's beneath me and in my intellect. Like, dude, shut up. You're a parasite. Mm, this is <clears throat> um, that sent me down the path of uh, like, oh, my team is filled with a bunch of frauds. <laughs> but yes, that's why burger patties are served frozen to you. Crank Sinatra, 10 bucks. I had a dream the other night where you taught me to weld and rebuild a car. I wish I had those skills. Now I could be a great tradesman and get the six figs and the girls up. No, you can get the six figs. You cannot get the girls up. Grody. Repeat after me. Mechanic. Grody. You're the best cool uncle I don't actually have. Thank you. I would. I am a pretty cool uncle. My nieces are not going to become worthless people. See, that's it. You just need one guy, one person, one gal. My loved one, fill in relation, my little cousin, my kid sister, my whatever, my children, but I know, raise your children. Whoa! Ha <laughs> ha! What is it, the 1950s? <clears throat> they will not become worthless kids. They will become productive adults. They will have an easier life because I will make sure. Cappy, didn't the didn't varmint just fail to protect? Yeah, I know. How about that? Oh, that, that hurt. That one hurt. So maybe, okay, you're right. I will attempt to, but have no expectation of making sure Lucifer and Geronimo become successful. I, I will try my best. Oh, but uh, whoop, sorry. Bishop of Eternity, two bucks. We should bottle clean air and sell it to China. I We probably could. I don't know. China, they're not that rich or wealthy or spoiled. Um, I think the market for lies is, is still best in the United States. The cabinet man, five bucks. Note how the pickup material a decade ago, a decade or more ago, was how to get a date or a kiss on a date. Now, mostly how to avoid a meet to harass it. Yeah. You guys want a very interesting book? It's a very short book. I'd say essay. Uh, the Pence Principle by Randall Bentwick. That's a good short book to read. How to. It's a great vaccination uh, against uh, any kind of that problem. Against getting Kavanaugh. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other. Hat and clogs. Yeah. 4334. Five bucks. No cap. These people came here and leech. <clears throat> was asked why nobody speaks Spanish. This is America. By a customer, what the F? Uh, some people don't. But I'll tell you this. There's more Mexicans working than there are liberal arts majors. Whether they speak Spanish or English doesn't I mean. Do you, go, do you see them on the roof? Do you see your house? You guys like your houses. Do you like McMansions? You do? Well, I can't. I'm against illegal immigration, of course. But that doesn't change the fact that a significant percentage of your housing stock, your lodging, your homes are being built by Mexican and a larger extent foreign labor. <clears throat> but we didn't want to teach Tina how to do framing, right? We didn't want to teach Bobby how to do roofing or how to pour concrete, right? They were going to change the world. Like, uh, what's that complete? Oh, the, the poster child for worthless American, David Hogg, that kid. Like, give me a million uh, uh, Mexican roofers before we have to deal with that piece of crap. I'll gladly take that. And what's he up to now? Is he graduated from college? Is he going to change the world? Uh, Goth Rocker, $10 again. It was an employee behind the counter could not get the million-dollar key machine to work. <laughs> Total waste. Also, all their specials are out of stock. Uh, you shop on Amazon. <clears throat> you guys want? Okay. First bit of advice. If you're new, you got problems, consider taking the class link below. Second thing, do as much shopping as you can online. Just interact with the real world, the human world, when you go shopping as little as humanly possible. And you can do that by going to olderbrother.com slash donate. Click on the Amazon banner, and then that way I get the Amazon affiliate commission. Olderbrother.com slash donate. <clears throat> Click on the Amazon banner. Jason L, five bucks. See you at the Narrows this summer, Cappy? No. Nope. I will not. I will not. Yeah, you're the guy who lives over there. Yeah. No, I don't. not going there ever again. If I can do it, I probably will never go to Minnesota ever again. 
I'll fly into Wisconsin, visit my folks in Wisconsin, uh, but I have no reason to go to uh, Minnesota. None. Douglas, five bucks. You are a hero. Have a great weekend. Thank you. No, I'm not a hero. A hero was the picture of the Navy SEAL got killed in Afghanistan in 2005 over at the coffee cup in Boulder City. That's a hero. I never risked my life. Now, I might have risked my, my, my uh, career and my reputation. And that's true, uh, but I did. You got to risk your life. You, you got to give a cop or firefighter or somebody who goes into a burning building or swims into a raging river. Then you're a hero. But if you didn't risk your life, not a hero. I think heroes become way too diluted a term. Are we caught up with everything? Erica Shanta Williams over at Erica's Classy Climb. Check her out. <clears throat> Two bucks. I'm going to CPAC in Orlando 22 this year. Oh, cool. What? Uh, when's the date? Because I'm going to be south of you. Well, I don't know if you're in Florida now. Hey, wait. Erica, email me. I'm coming to Texas. Let me. Well, you were jet setting all around anyway, So, but let me know if you're in Texas. I'm, I'm heading out there next week. Uh, the competent man, five bucks cappy. <clears throat> but that is what you talking with Michaela would be hilarious for us. Yeah, it would. But it would, if, okay. Would it even be a conversation? Or would it just be me rolling my eyes? Yeah, like, yeah, okay. Asking her some very pointed questions. She wouldn't get the context or why I'm asking them. She'd answer them honestly. And to anyone with a trained mind, they'd realize, oh, yeah, moron. I'd be like, okay, so what'd you study? And she, oh, and she'd be proud. I studied in whatever. Something stupid. <laughs> what'd you do after college? Found myself a troubled. A very experienced, a very worldly. They don't know they're NPCs, you know that? First rule of NPCs is they don't know they're NPCs. They think this average, common, boring crap they achieve with a huge subsidy from the government or their daddy is impressive. I mean, really, talk to her. I graduated with honors with a liberal arts degree. Yay for you. I wiped my, my ass with my left hand today. It was a little difficult, but I did it. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> um, Would have no idea as the Cappy rant craked up as to what's going on. I would maybe get perturbed and go off the handle and put her in her place. But I don't think NPCs are capable of being put into place. And there would be more than enough supporters coming in to mollify and lick her wounds for her. She would, oh, he's just a jerk. And there's, come on, really, what would it <clears throat> Oh, you've had no hardship or life-forming or forging experiences. Yeah, single mom, huh? Well, yeah, finding yourself, huh? Hey, did you ever find that place that had vineyards and what did pretentious people have? Uh, I don't know. Horse hobby farms near? Good. That's nice. Yeah. How's your dad? Is he? I like her dad. I know a lot of people give him guff, and I have, I have critiques of Jordan Peterson, but I like Dr. Jordan Peterson. Yeah, cool. Okay. Hey, don't trip over those coattails. Huh? What? Never mind. Way over your head. Way over your head. Dye your hair more blonde. Like, oh, okay, you're going to watch me at Fresh and Fit, and I'll probably be the more quiet one there because Donovan talks too much. That's, that's the number one reason. But the number two reason is I'll just ask very straight, pointed questions of the girls. And I'll just give them the rope to hang themselves. I won't even make a criticism. I'll let them paint the painting. They're like, okay, all right, that's nice. Well, what about this? All right, what about that? Oh, okay, but this and that and that and this, but then this and that, that and this follows. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. All right. Huh? What? NPCs don't know they're NPCs. <clears throat> Uh, Erica, two bucks. Broke in choosy. Broke slash too good for a job. Ha ha. Yeah, Ed Lattimore had a post. Guy was asking him for money. He says, why don't you go work a job? There's like all these. Wendy's is hiring $16 an hour. He says, well, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> <clears throat> it's 
Scott Ludke, regular guy here. Five bucks. America only knows how to consume. Our gluttony for stuff has ruined our country. Eventually, humanity will consume itself to extinction. No, there's countries that produce stuff. And soon they're going to say, why are we producing all this stuff for the Americans? Why don't we produce this stuff for ourselves? And then Vladivostok will become a nice place. Oh, oh. Robert Donovan, 10 generous dollars. Trade organizations, example, CPA unions, AMA, are not in business to advance a trade. They're in business to make money for their members. This includes limiting the number of practitioners. Yep. Well, I don't want them complaining about how there's not enough accountants. John G, two bucks, say, wanted to say I have hated restaurants for years. Yeah, you're probably a little bit ahead of the curve on me on that one. Um. Did you know, Mad Two Bucks? Can't be hundred thousand party coming soon. Let's go. Yeah, that'd be kind of. I maybe we do a hundred thousand. Hey, you know what'd be cool? Maybe if I time it right, and we can get it. Like we're at ninety nine thousand nine hundred fifty, and I do a thing where it's like, hey, subscribe gets over a hundred thousand. I'll refresh and we'll celebrate. We can find out who the hundred thousand uh, subscriber is. That'd be kind of cool. And they went. Uh, they went. Uh, what would I give him? I give him some kind of thing. He'd be the winner of a proud thing. Um. Uh, I don't know. I get what, what would be cool. Maybe a Sergeant Rumpy Fluffalo. We find a stuffed buffalo. Some uh, stuffed buffalo from South Dakota. Sean from the cheap seats. Five bucks. No Minnesota. Where else can you get Juicy Lucy or Loot Fisk? Uh, the grocery store. The internet. And I can also not get shot <clears throat> or have my car broken into or have the building burnt down. Uh, and have a bunch of sanctimonious Minnesotans say, well, you really do deserve to have a car broken into. You're just lucky you have a car. Hey, have fun at the Humphrey School of Management. All right. Yeah. I can't wait till feces comes to Minnesota sidewalks. I cannot wait for that. That because, man, at least San Francisco, it's warm enough. You can get it off with the hose. Minnesota, that stuff freezes. Oh, what government worker is going to enjoy doing that? We're going to get a government program to raise awareness about the bad things about pooping on the sidewalks. We have to educate the homeless. <clears throat> Boop -boo -doo -boo -doo. Oh, hang on. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything here. Restaurants for years. I'm a boo. Shouting for the. Oh, no, I got that one. I think we're caught up. Uh, Dino side. Uh, Dino mine. Hey, you guys remember Jimmy Walker? 13. Uh, 223. So glad I flunked Kami Collage and got my CD out. Yeah. Best thing. Dude, a lot of times you'll be going through life. Something bad. Like on on paper, it's bad. Like, oh, it's really bad. <clears throat> it's always happened to me. And it wasn't until I was older I realized that was the best thing that happened to me because it forced me to make a change, forced me to make an adjustment. Future count in five bucks. What are your thoughts on Switzerland? Yeah. I found a response about Singapore very informative. Uh, <clears throat> I've been to Switzerland. For me, it'd be too cold because it's up in the mountains, and it was too quiet. Uh, I It was way too quiet, and I think my presence in unconscious ways, like uh, the way I would walk or maybe the way I would talk, I think I'm just too much a, a bull in the china shop there. It's a very quiet country. It's it's a it's a library. It's a, it's a big library. Very quiet. Maybe if I was older <clears throat> and wanted to retire, I'd go there. But I I'm, I wasn't that impressed with it. It was very expensive. The food was eh. I I'm probably more tropical Asia. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not Sweden, Norway. I know Switzerland's not Northern Europe, but I, I'm not into the cold snow European thing. I'm into more of my Spaniard blood, Mediterranean beaches where it's warm and ain't none of that white stuff around. I like, I like the warmth despite being 60 odd percent Scandinavian, tragically. You're actually Spaniard? Yes, I am. Found that out with the blood test. 18%. That's where I get my salsa dancing and my sword fighting. 
You fight with swords? Not really, but who knows? Probably, probably would be great at it. Probably got the genetics for it. Somewhere then, you know, Esteban Clario, my great, 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 great grandfather, fought the French or the English with swords. Maybe I'm really good with a foil. Maybe it has a dashing mustache. Que pasa, señorita chica bonita? Si, estoy Esteban Clario. Uh, y mi grande, grande, grande Paquito, el Chaparrito Clary. Esta un muy importante podcaster. Si, en el año, oh, geez, what are the numbers? Dos, cero, dos, dos. Dos, cero, dos, dos. Si, muy importante podcaster. Oh, Esteban. <laughs> and there's my Spanish. That was my, that was Cappy's Spanish. Great, 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 great grandfather. Esteban Clario. Yeah. As far as anybody else knows. A 18 year old here graduate high school. You graduate from high school, Caleb. With no marketable skills. Well, no one does. High school is not there to teach you anything. It is to teach you to be a leftist, a Democrat, and to make it that you have to go to school more. Thanks, education system. Is gunsmithing a good idea for a trade? No, that's a hobby. That's a hobby. You could do it. Like learn CNC mach milling and machine working. Yeah, learning how to cut metal is fine. Welding, and that's a good skill in a trade, but not just gunsmithing. That would be a subdivision. Like I'm a mechanic first and foremost, but then I also custom build motorcycles or something. Are we caught up? I think we're caught up. We are caught up. <clears throat> All right. There you go. Link down below. Take that class. New class. I think I got all the kinks worked out. Uh, achieving financial excellence. The most most direct path to wealth. And for those of you who are economically interested, it's economically philosophical because I talk about how the concept of wealth is changing as each um, revolution in the economy via technology changes things. So too does it redefine wealth. And so you might want to take a look at that. And then, um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess uh, how not to become a millennial would help people in this. And then Worthless, the Young Person's Indispensable Guide to Choosing the Right Major. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.